Hello everybody, when it comes to War Machine overall, I do not recommend this card. Not because it's bad, I actually think it has a lot of places. I just think right now, it's not really a needed card. It's a fun niche tech card into control metas. We haven't had one since the Professor X nerf. And it has some cool archetypes it creates with Infinite and Ma. But the decks with those cards added are also just as consistent or more consistent without playing War Machine, Infinite, or Ma. So it's a good card, has some good niches, but right now not needed and you can play decks perfectly well without him. And that's the reason why. Let's get started. Hello everybody. How are you doing? It feels like it's been a while every time, but yeah. Today we're going to be talking about War Machine, the newest card out of Marvel Snap, the new Jeff, some would say, the big honcho. I've really not heard anyone say that, but that kind of thing should be a fun card. A lot of cool synergies and has its place, but you know, is it consistent, right? Like that's a big deal. Let's get started. All right, so we have War Machine. He is a four energy, six power card with the honor of you until the end of the next turn. Nothing can stop you from playing cards anywhere. So basically he gives all of your cards the next turn a Jeff-like ability. You can play them anywhere, but you still have like the Jeff problems. Like you can't play into that bounce location and stuff like that. But it's still very good for um, dealing with cards like Professor X with Storm and also locations that lock you from playing in any particular turns. You can just ignore that. So... That's pretty useful. It's kind of like a tech card. However, it has more uses because there are cards that synergize very well with being able to play anywhere. Uh, my, the main two, in my opinion, are Infinite and Ebony Maw. Those two are the cleanest synergies here because Ebony and Maw prevents you from playing it after turn three. This turns that off. And Infinite prevents you from playing it if you don't play uh play nothing the previous turn right so you can just play this into infinite now people usually play infinite with sunspot or play infinite with black knight so this just gives you another way of getting those cards out and that is pretty good synergy that i think this will have some place in the meta however when it comes to just consistency issues it's hard to design a deck that works without war machine generically so you kind of have to have like okay if i don't get war machine in the particular turn four or five how am i going to play this deck and that's really the challenge people have been struggling with this deck where a lot of decks already if they're playing infinite they're playing infinite in this specific way and then war machine just gives you an alternative option which sometimes you try to rely on but isn't super super clean now, when it comes to recommending this card or not, overall, um, I think there's a lot of hype for this card. Uh, and, and I would say for good reason. I don't think this card is bad in any any particular way. I just do think that you can ger generally have better... Where is my thing? You could def definitely have better cards to pick up compared to War Machine when you look at the stats. So War Machine's stats isn't super, super good. It's okay but not exceptional, not Mockingbird or anything, not Hope Summers. It's an okay card. It kind of reminds me of like you're playing a tech card, essentially. That's kind of how I look at this. You're playing a tech card in essence, though it has good synergies with some specific types. So if you are in a tech heavy meta where people are playing like Professor X, like the old lockdown meta, right? This would be, this would be a game changer for that particular meta because you'd be able to just say, oh, you're trying to storm Professor X me. No, 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 no. I'm just going to counter that completely. And then that would be insane, an insane answer into that particular meta. However, that meta is kind of passed. A lot of people aren't really playing Storm into Professor X because X got nerfed. I do think like if this was in the meta, maybe Professor X wouldn't have to have ner been nerfed because you, you would have had a good answer that felt organic to play that you'd have, that you'd have in some matchups that might just like mess with the win rates, that, things like that. However, right now, there aren't that many super controlled decks. There have been some popping up because War Machine is being played and people are doing like Storm into Legion, stuff like that. Like, you know, like, but um, other than like those specific like, new um, decks being created to test War Machine, 
generally the meta isn't very lockdown specific. So I just kind of think this is a fun tech card, kind of niche in control metas, but it does have some things going for it. It creates new archetypes. So people are creating decks with Ebony Maw and Infinite that did not exist before. And this is the card that opens it up. And I'm a big fan of cards that create new archetypes and this does do that. So that's a pretty big plus for it. I probably should have had a green highlight for that, but just cards that are not replaceable. War Machine is one of those cards where if you have this, you'll be able to play some decks that you wouldn't be able to create otherwise. So that is pretty important. So if you are like, if you're the type of person that likes trying out new decks, seeing which archetypes work for you, this is definitely a card I'd recommend because you will get to play new decks with this in your collection compared to if you don't have this in your collection, anytime a cool Infinite Ebony Maw War Machine deck comes out, you can't try it. And that's a little bit sad. Um, my main issue is that a lot of the decks that are playing War Machine right now, if you take out the War Machine synergy, the deck is, or is just as good or even more consistent. So a lot of people are playing this with Black Knight. Black Knight has been refined for a while. And normally when you add a new card, it makes those decks better, right? Cause the deck, cause the card itself is broken and then a, it makes this deck better. However, this card is relying on other cards. So it's, it's more of a combo piece and combo pieces have an inherent issue is that it's not consistent across the board, right? Like hope summer is not a combo piece, right? You play this and it works with everything and it just makes decks better. This you play this and then you hope that you have Ebony Ma, you hope you have infinite in the right turns. Or this didn't do anything, or it's a tempo loss essentially, right? If you don't, if you play this by itself without any synergies, you're not playing into an un, unrevealed location or or a lockdown location. It's just a tempo loss. So four six, you can do a lot more for four power most of the time. So you have to have the payoff. You have to have the maw or the infinite. So if you are just playing this, hoping that you'll get the payoff every time, you're not going to get the payoff every time, and that's why it's kind of like a combo card. However. It is very good into some decks, some control decks, right? People are playing Professor X, people are playing Storm. It's very good into that. It's also very good into some locations. So there's just locations that lock you out where you can't play into these locations early or you can't play them at all. This is very good into breaking into those locations like Space Stone. This is fantastic, right? Things like that where you have these scenarios which lock you out. You can just play War Machine and get over that. So it has very good use cases. It's just not the I play this into everything or every meta and it works perfectly. You can maybe find a deck that does do that, but it's not something you're going to see all the time. So overall, bringing it back, reason why we're not recommending it is just that you don't need it. It's right now, like you don't need it. There's not, you're not going to be playing into a lot of archetypes which are like, ooh, War Machine would break this. Like if you are, getting that scenario right now you might be because people are trying like storm into war machine to legion stuff like i've seen that and that's toxic right and i get it right but that is not going to last i think that combo is too inconsistent for people to just like that's my new thing i'm playing this every time it's fun you know for a while but i just think like once the meta settles it's not going to be like very locked down centric and war machine won't be needed in that particular um, meta game as well as you just playing it it's it's stats are okay but they're not um they're not impressive they're not something you would go out of your way to jump for so that's that's my main rationale it's been hyped it's a hype card for sure and i think it's a good card like i'm not i think there will be decks that play this and i i just think war machine to infinite is good enough like people are going to have that in some decks for forever like <laughs> like that is a great that's a great like hey turn Turn five War Machine into Infinite, or you know, if you're playing like Hope Summers, turn five War Machine, you could play Infinite into Ebony Mod 27 power for seven man is very, very good. So, uh, you know, that's I do think this has a place in the meta. It's just like, is it is it the most broken combo right now? Probably not, but I think it's a good card. I just don't think you have to go out of your way to get it. Now, if you want it, I'm okay with that. Like, this is not a card. I'd be sad with you having, but I'm just explaining the reason. All right, let's go with some of the spotlights. The spotlights this month have not been all too impressive, and you know it, it keeps that trend here. So this one you have War Machine, Silk Silver Samurai. Honestly, Silk Silver Samurai not really the most impressive cards 
um, at all. Kind of said this was like, um, you know, a weak month in terms of the quality of supplemental cards. Silk and, and Samurai, not really something people play a lot of at all. I do think like these cards could be, well, I, I think Silver Samurai could, could get a buff, like plus one power and it'd probably be fine. Silk I'm okay with, I probably wouldn't change, but you know, generally those are my thoughts on, on those two cards. If you want War Machine, you can, but the cards it's next to aren't super impressive to me. So that's like my main, my main criteria there. Next up, we have some decks that we have, of course. First one is Black Knight. So Black Knight is very easy because Black Knight's already heavily popular. So it's very easy to kind of splash this into um, a Black Knight deck because you're already playing Infinite. You just have to add Ebony Maw and War Machine. You're kind of already done. So this is like a very clean way of doing it. There are other like versions of Black Knight, but this one I like the most. So, this is, you know, you, you don't really lose any of the essence of playing the Black Knight deck with this version, so that's kind of why I like it. So if you like playing Black Knight, you can try this out, and you have a War Machine, you could try this out. I don't think it's really going to hurt you too much, so definitely something to try out. Next up, we have... What do we have next? Ah, we have this little interesting ditty. So this is like... um. It's like a Dracula dump, kind of, but it has a lot of more payoffs. Kind of reminds me of like the old school Destroyer decks where you'd have the armor or the Cosmo into Destroyer. But since you have War Machine, you also have another way of pulling out the Infinite. Before, with a deck like this, Infinite's not playable at all, so you just don't have any value. And then you have a lot of like big late game with the Zero, with the Martyr, with the uh with the titania with the ebony maw you just have a lot of early game you can protect with your armor or you can just go for a lot of big stuff in the late game with the dracula with the destroyer with the infinite so kind of like this list i thought it was kind of cool so wanted to showcase it next up we have the she not deck or she hulk deck essentially this is just high evolution she hulk not i think it makes sense because you're already playing like very, you're already playing the Infinite, so it just, instead of having to rely on Sunspot, Pass, She-Hulk, Infinite, now you can just go War Machine, Infinite, if you don't want to do the Sunspot, Pass line. So it just gives you more options, and it's not too bad. Instead of playing High Evo, you're playing War Machine, and you have more options, so it's kind of nice. And then Hope Summers also fixes your curve if you don't want to go turn, uh, turn 7 with Magic. So just kind of lots of options here to play the she not deck and it makes sense to me so i kind of like it i think it i think it's elegant and then next one here this one is just a lockdown yourself right you have the storm you have the Eliath, and then you just have the other supplemental pieces you're not really fully going on um using the combo you just have war machine as a tech card here into the mirrors and stuff like that it's not really this is kind of like my initial thoughts on War Machine, how it'll be played. You might not even play it for Infinite. You might just play it for a tech card where it's like, okay, if your opponent is trying to lock you down, you can just play War Machine and completely close that, right? Like, so if someone's trying to ally with you because they've locked down other lanes, you just play War Machine and you, you kind of ignore that kind of stuff. So that's just like, this This type of deck's my idea of like what people might actually be playing this in as a tech tool, not for... Hey, I have to play this with Infinite. I have to play this with Ebony Maw. You don't. You don't have to play this with Infinite or Ebony Maw. It's just like, that's the cool thing to do right now. So a lot of people are doing that. But I think it has use cases as just a generic tech tool to be played in the metagame. So I just thought that was interesting. And the last one we have is like my own creation. This is a deck I have, you know, I think it's pretty good. I kind of call it War at Midnight. I don't know if I'm going to make a dedicated video for it that's why I, I have it here just in case but it's it's kind of a dracula dumb deck however it has it's more focused on making sure you have a strong early game as well here so you have the zero into the uh titania you have like a, a favorite combo of mine where it's like inf invisible woman into like some good tech or some good strong early games and we do have strong guy because this deck very easily empties their hands with um, the discards we have, we have a lot of early game and we have a lot of discards, so um, it's pretty easy to do that. You have the Swordmaster and you have the Dracula. 
as well as this this not being a pretty heavy curved deck so you can kind of set it up where you have no cards in your hand the strong guy pops off it's a three nine which is really good so generally like that kind of idea and then you have dracula dracula can either hit the proxima or the infinite so you do have to be careful or you have to be aware like okay where's proxima gonna go um so you just have to keep that in mind but i do think proxima is like not that hard to um force into where you want it to go so it's pretty solid and then infinite you you have the two ways of pulling it with dracula or War machine either way works so you know generally good in that that department the other line is like maybe you play hope summers instead of something i don't know like that that allows you to play both infinite and ebony mon in, in one turn but i honestly don't think that's needed i think you have enough mana when i've played it to empty your hand every game like in one way or another so generally okay with that but yeah this is a deck i've made i haven't there's no there's no data on it so you know try it out see if you like it but it's just the type of i think the type of decks war machine can create is pretty interesting so i do like the card i just don't think like right now it's a core card or something you're you're really going to be sad to not have at the end of the month i think that's that's my takeaway and that's why i don't recommend it but overall it's a strong card it's a cool card i think it's fun for sure like this is one of the funner cards released this month so that's all i got for you hope you guys enjoy take care and have a wonderful rest of your day here comes the jingle once you get it calling the snap once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you tomorrow snap your skills will be in